The first session, the frontliner of our today's event is, as I mentioned already, John Siegel, a customer success manager at iSpring. John carefully takes iSpring's customers into his hands, helps them achieve the best results with the company's solutions. And because this is the main part with which he helps his clients, today he will be speaking about launching a learning. I think it's just a fantastic topic to launch our conference. So now let's give it a try and try to connect John. How are you today, Chris? I'm absolutely fine. A little nervous, thrilled and excited because it's a big event, but um, I'm super good. So do you think you are ready to commence? Yes, thank you for your kind words. I'm really happy to be here and to, to see you. So hello again, everyone. My name is John Siegel and I'm a customer success manager at iSpring. Uh, today, we will talk about um, how to identify the main objectives and business goals of your e-learning project, how to get your direct on board with e-learning, um, how to choose the perfect LMS and authoring tool for your needs, how to save money while providing high quality e-learning, a downloadable checklist for choosing e-learning software. Um, distance e-learning is a project. As with any project before launching it, uh, you need to define goals and objectives. If this is not done, e-learning will become a useless hobby that you waste money on. So stage one, define goals and business objectives. The most common needs that clients come to me with are reduce employee training time, reduce employee training costs, increase the number of trained employees. But as you know, all goals must be in smart format. By the way, uh, do any of you know what the SMART acronym represents? While you answer, um, I'll give an example of actual needs that clients came to me with. Reduce employee training time by 30%. It was previously taken three months for an employee to master basic functions. So we plan to perform the same training, but in two months. Reduce costs. The company was spending an insane amount of money to host regional seminars. We decided to reduce the number of business trips taken by business coaches. Increase the number of trained employees by 10 to 15%. Why do they have such needs? Many companies have a growing staff because mm, they are opening new offices in other cities. Along with territorial expansion, their offerings are also expanding. They are introducing a number of new products to the market. In order for new divisions to reach the planned targets faster, it's necessary to automate the training of new salespeople, explain product features, the specifics of working in the company, and corporate policy. The face-to-face -face format is rejected immediately as the cost of travel and transport are too high. That's why companies uh, turn into distance learning. Stage two, promote the idea of e-learning to the leadership. Correctly formulated goals are favorable arguments for management. To protect the e-learning project, you need to conduct a study on how employees are trained now, how much time and money is spent on it and how e-learning will help. Actually, the goals that I outlined above become the main arguments in your favor. Speed. The sooner we prepare an employee, the sooner they reach a certain operational load, and the sooner they start 
earning money for the company. Cost savings. Face-to-face -face training is expensive. Costs include daily allowances for business coach, plane tickets, hotel and lecture room rentals, and meals. To support the argument, show the management how much training cost now and how much can be saved by launching e-learning. Broad coverage. Hundreds of employees from different branches can be trained simultaneously. They will study according to one program, according to one standard. Here you can show um, the authorities what the e-courses look like, the training program and how the work is going in the LMS. To do this, you can develop a special course for top managers. Stage three, choose an LMS and course editor. The e-learning arsenal also depends directly on the goals. As a rule, companies use one of three types of tools or the whole set at once for distance learning. Webinars, distance learning system, course editor. If you rarely train employees, even in person, then webinars alone may be enough for you. If you train staff in a complex manner, then you need to utilize a course editor plus a distance learning system. And LMS is not just a file hosting service where you can upload educational materials. It offers the possibility of assessing knowledge, monitoring learning and motivating your learners. How should you choose a training system? First step, define your wish list. First, take a piece of paper and just write down everything you want to get from an LMS. Tests, screencasts, built-in audio and video editor, gamification, and so on. Write out everything that is important to you and then rank and discuss what is needed and what is not. Now I'll give you an example of the wishes of one of the companies I've worked with. Minimization of IT costs. They were looking for an LMS that did not need to be installed on the company's server and maintained. Cloud. They needed an online system that is available to everyone and always from any device. Compliance with the law on the protection of personal data. All data must be stored in the USA on the provider servers. Ease of management. Uploading new courses, creating training programs and registering User, um, user should be able to be done by a business person, not a programmer. Therefore, they choose an intuitive system. Clear system of statistics. The management will need numbers from you. How many people you trained in what um, specialization and how they scored. It was important for the client that the statistics system be simple and intuitive. Scalability. In the beginning, they plan to train about 300 employees through the LMS and gradually expand the number of students. Work stability. No crashes or system failures. Reliable live technical support. Support should help to quickly solve problems in chat by mail or by phone. Portfolio, it was important for them to know that this system was already begin, um, being used by other companies. Of course, our LMS met all the criteria, which is why they became our clients. By the way, um, such criteria will help you quickly see whether the selected LMS is suitable or not. Mm, look online to see which 
distance learning system exist and which ones meet your needs. Uh, we will share um, via chat examples of e-learning system overviews. The 15 best enterprise LMSs to choose from in 2022. 15 top picks for SaaS LMS keep you ahead in the cloud. A detailed review of five employee training management and tracking software. Stage four, estimate costs and form a budget. How to do it right? A distance learning budget usually includes license for the course editor and annual subscription to the LMS, estimation of costs for installation, debugging and support of the LMS. How many people are involved in this? How much time they will spend on it? Purchasing or renting a server if you decide to buy a server solution. Content preparation. The company will order courses from an external contractor or develop them internally. In the case of the second option, uh, then decide who will perform this task. Administration. It is necessary to hire a separate person who will manage the distance learning system. Bottom line, estimate the planned cost per month or per year and calculate the cost in terms of one person per month or per year to estimate monetization. How, how can you realize savings? Choose a cloud-based LMS. If a vendor offers a SaaS software as a service solution, it will take life much easier for you and your IT department. You won't need to pay for a one-time license. You can limit yourself to a subscription while shifting all the work of installing, debugging, repairing, and supporting the system to the vendor. Create courses yourself. This is um, the simplest custom-made slide course costs upwards of $1,000. We decided it was uh, cheaper to develop content in-house. However, don't forget that course developers are not taken on their own. They need to be hired or trained. Who manages training? First, you need to determine who is responsible, who will oversee the project, if this is not done, serious difficulties may arise. Relatively speaking, you need to launch distance learning at a certain time, but it turns out that the LMS is ready, but some of the content is not yet complete. To avoid delays, it is desirable to resolve these issues in advance. Determine who will administer the system and who can replace the person if they fall ill or go on vacation. Once the administrative roles have been defined, a pilot course can be developed. If courses are developed in different departments, each should have a responsible person who is responsible for training and make sure that the materials are released um, on time and updated. When the roles um, are defined, uh, the development of the pilot course can begin. Stage five, preparation and pilot. Um, you should not launch distance learning uh, for the entire company at once. It's better to run a new method in one of the departments. The main thing is to agree on a pilot project with the head of this department in advance. Who from the unit will support the pilot launch? Who will provide user data? Who, who will be responsible for the content? What tests for employees need to be developed? And what should be considered as passing score? 
The next step is communication within the company. The employees who will train should understand it. You need to tell them when the training will begin, why you need their participation and how they will help. Also, you need to teach them how to use the trainer system and conduct an initial briefing. Explain step by step. Enter your login and password here. Open courses here. See the remaining time here. You need to um, take the course uh, like this. If you don't do this, then employees will torment you with questions in the future or um, failed courses and tests because of their, their ignorance. What courses should be created first? Um, you shouldn't start with welcome courses for new employees. They require a well-developed plot, knowledge of pedagogical design and various interactive mechanics. That is a complex product. So it's better to start with something simpler and more understandable, such as a grocery course. Your novice developers will be able to master the course editor by developing such content, and your employees will be able to explore the products that the company releases. For the pilot course to go well, two conditions must be met. Agree and approve the training programs for each category of employee with the department heads. Create training program, programs in the LMS based on this. Enter employee into the system and separate them into groups according to the direction of training. Territorial basis and the structure of departments. So it will be easier to upload reports later. Prepare a program to improve employee training in, in problem areas, scripts, simulations, courses, demo videos, and tests. Carry out the retraining of employee, employees according to the prepared program. Analyze the control result. So more about control results. Decide with the leaders in advance when to take the first cut of knowledge and what result is considered good. Ideally, cuts should be made before training, immediately after, and three weeks later. Then you can objectively ev evaluate the results. This last test will show what knowledge employees use in everyday life. If the results obtained after three weeks have deteriorated significantly, make changes to the course and reassign employees. If the pilot run goes well, distance learning can be extended to other departments. When you finally pilot your evaluation, you need also do these two things. The first one, review with department heads, and the second, identify problem areas with leaders. Okay, so let's recap our stages. Stage one, define goals and business objectives. Stage two, promote the idea of e-learning to the leadership. Stage three, choose LMS and course editor. Stage four, estimate costs and budget. Stage five, prepare and run the pilot program. Also, uh, mm, as an icing on the cake, I prepared a two white papers. How to choose the right e-learning authoring tool and how to choose a learning management system. LMS. They are downloadable and uh, you see uh, QR codes on your screens. So you can find them just right here in chat. 
And also, um, I'm ready for Q and A. So if you have any questions, just feel free to type them down um, to discuss. Right. Thank you so much, John. That was very quick, I would say. Thank you so much for leaving a lot of time for the questions and answers. I'm sure this is going to be extremely valuable for all of our participants. Once again, many thanks. And I'd like to kindly remind you that a lot of valuable information was not only on the slides, but also they were in the chat. The technical team has left a lot of additional information in the links. So we welcome everybody to please uh, take your time and formulate the questions that you might have to John. We have already received one, the first one, and I'm happy to kick start with this. While John is giving us uh, the answer, providing us the answer, I'm sure you might be able to come up with more questions to clarify more things. And again, I'm super happy we have time for that. So to begin with, uh, we have received a question right at the start of your uh, presentation. So this okay. might be um, something that um, a colleague was uh, really thinking about for a really long time. I'd like to read it out loud. The question consists of two parts. The first one is, is this an example of a possible gap analysis? by looking at where they are and where they want to be based on the challenge the company has. I think this was a question related to one of your slides, John. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for your question. So um, every situation um, depends on many factors, actually. So um, it can take uh, a for example, it can, it can take a week or it can take uh, six months um, just to um, dive deeply into the project and to see um, uh, what they need, what they are looking for, um, and what we, can, um, what we can offer as a solution. So um, I think um, the best idea will be to discussed that with one of our sales reps um, to dive, uh, as I mentioned, to dive deeply into the project um, and to see uh, what we can what we can offer. All right, thank you very much. This was the first question from um, David. Uh, I hope, David, this answer was satisfying. And uh, if not, then please uh, feel free to jump in and add more clarification questions, right? So we had a question from Mohammed about getting the slides, and I'm sure our colleagues from iSpring support will be able to cover that. While we have several more questions, the one from Sarah Jo, which is, do you have a favorite LMS? I guess you might have been expecting <laughs> that question, John. Yes, of course, I have one. This is iSpring Learn LMS system. Yes, and I love I love that a lot. Mm, it's super easy to use and uh, you don't have to mm, spend any time to launch a project with uh, iSpring Learn because this is a cloud-based tool and mm, you don't um, have to install it on your servers or something like that. So it's ready to go uh, product. So once you purchase um, iSpring Learn, so you can just start start working with it. So yes, my favorite LMS system, of course, is iSpring Learn. Right, of course. <laughs> I was not having any doubts about that. So John, right. we have more comments and a couple of more questions. So let's proceed. Mm -hmm. uh, David said that the answer you gave was very satisfying. So super happy about this. Let's proceed. Oh. The other question we had is about, can we develop content on iSpring and use the SCORM on a different LMS? Is that an understandable question? Yes, yes. Good. Um, so actually, we have two main separate uh, tools. They are iSpring Suite Max. This is our mo most powerful authoring tool to create engaging content um, just from scratch. 
And also we have iSpring Learn LMS, which is learning management system. So iSpring Suite Max is more about creating content and iSpring Learn um, is more about how to deliver it and how to view the progress um, uh, of your learners. So first of all, you, um, you, you need to create content with your iSpring Suite Max and then upload to, uh, for example, iSpring Learn LMS. But if you have um, a different one LMS, iSpring Suite Max uh, compatible with um, almost any formats like SCORMs, X API, um, and so on. So also you can create a video format and upload it to your YouTube um, channel. Um, and also iSpring Suite Max comes in a bundle with iSpring Space. Um, this is one more <laughs> cloud-based tool, but um, it allows you to share your content Mm, so you can upload it to the cloud and just share the link with anyone. So your users, your viewers can just mm, take a look and just follow the link and um, mm -hmm. take a look at this, th that content. Yeah, thank you very much, John. I think this was super helpful for Juventus okay. and everybody else who might have been interested in this. Uh, I'm very happy that we have more and more questions coming. Please, uh, please don't stop the music. <laughs> please keep going. I really look forward and I'm sure John is also look for, looking forward to more questions and we'll proceed. Uh, the other one that we have received is uh, a pretty expectable one. Uh, it's about your second favorite LMS. <laughs> <laughs> oh, second favorite. Interesting question. Thank you a lot for that question. <laughs> Actually, I'm a little bit confused right now. Uh, <laughs> well, mm, there are so many LMS system on the market. And um, mm, so I can just uh, mm, give you just maybe one or two examples. This is maybe the Chebor or um, Articulate 360. So, um, so yes, mm, I'm, I'm not sure that they are my second favorite LMS, but um, this is just what in my mind right now. <laughs> yeah, on the top of your mind. Okay, I think this was satisfying for Lauren, who was uh, offering us this provocative question, and we are moving forward. Right. Uh, yes, um, I think Matthew wanted to clarify if iSpring works with Canvas, but I believe our colleagues have already confirmed that. Uh, so we will proceed with a couple of more questions. John has a question regarding COVID situation. So given COVID, hmm. do you have many people working from home? Assuming you do, are there issues with people accessing remotely? No, I mm, I don't think so. Um, there are any mm, there are not any issues with um, mm, with people who um, who work remotely. So uh, we are living in a modern world. So I think this is just a part of our lives to work remotely. Um, no, no issues with that. Now. I think this is good to know because, you know, a lot of different software systems and general different systems did have issues with remote access simply because of some geographical issues in different countries and um, whatnot. There could have been many different situations. So it's good to confirm that uh, there was not an issue with ice cream. Right. And just one, um, one note. So um, if you have ice cream with Mac subscription, um, you can download um, the tool to as many machines as you want to. Mm, and to activate the license, you just need to log into your iSpring Space account. So you can have um, a computer um, at work and at home, and um, you can have access on both of them, but not simultaneously. Gotcha. Yeah, thank you very much for this clarification. I see a lot of our um, listeners and um, 
those who are attending the conference, the attendees, they are very satisfied with your answers. So thank you very much. We keep going. I'm so happy to hear yeah, that. Um, yeah, absolutely. I uh, have a couple of more questions here on board for you. So um, I believe people are asking about SCORM. So um, the clarification is coming from um, Empire. Actually, um, I'm not a technical specialist. Um, That's okay. I, I just know that iSprint Speedmax is compatible with SCORM, so you can create SCORM formats, uh, SCORM files to upload um, to, to the LMS, which supports SCORM. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. No, uh, I think John is totally okay if uh, you're not, you are not able to entertain this question. Uh, we will just uh, ask um, our technical team to provide some support yeah, in this regard. And I'm sure it's going to be all um, nice and uh, sweet. Uh, and I'm sure, yes, actually, we've already received the answer from them. So fantastic job. Thank you very much, guys. So several more questions. Are you not tired, John? Are we good to continue? <laughs> yes, sure. Um, OK. Yeah. OK, very well. So there is a question from David. Uh, it seems that after doing step two, uh, will that give you a direction of what LMS to choose with your clients? And has it ever happened that the wrong LMS was chosen? What do you do if this may occur? Mm. Okay, can you just clarify that one more time? Um, sure, I didn't, absolutely. Yep, thank you. Yeah, absolutely, no problem. What is more, we might have some technical difficulties sometimes. That's why um, I just want to be sure that uh, everything is loud and clear. It seems that after doing step two, it will give us a direction of what LMS to choose with your clients. Has it ever happened that the wrong LMS was chosen? What do you do if this happens? Oh, that's interesting question. Uh, actually, uh, all my clients mm, um, who I'm working with and who mm, have chosen iSpring Learn, uh, <laughs> they didn't... Um, um, they don't have any like quest questions like that because um, we always mm, uh, trying to be in touch. Um, we are uh, having upcoming goals and um, like a, a scenario what we are going to do. So if you have, um, mm, if you just write down what you want to achieve, that will be easier to. Um, to see the results and the end. And usually, um, I, spring, I, I usually work with iSpring Learn LMS. So um, all my clients, they are happy with this system. Um, and they don't have uh, questions like that usually. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, John. No, no, all is good. Um, just wanted to say that we have really devoted audience, don't we? I think we are blessed with the listeners like that who are very detailed yes. in their questions. So thank you, David. You seem to be so far uh, racing for the title, the best questions ever. So uh, keep going, David. We look forward to hearing from for more. We are looking forward to hearing more questions from you. Right, moving on. Um, Sarah, I will uh, definitely address this question to our technical team regarding the live uh, caption. So let's proceed now with the other questions that we have. Um, we have a question from Germany. So some uh, foreign guests as well joining our conference. This is fantastic. I'm very happy to see uh, different guests from all over the world. I've already seen several international guests in our Telegram chat, so please join and make sure that you are connected with iSpring community. So Eva is uh, saying hi from Germany, and she says, we are starting to create e-learning, not for employees, but for the clients. So the time saving is not on our side. Do you have any idea how to still have some savings in my calculation? 
Thank you for your question. And uh, I'm so happy that uh, people come to join us all, all over the world. Um, so I have a couple of clients who, um, who use iSpring Learn LMS for their clients. Uh, you can create different departments right into um, LMS and um, they will be separated. Mm, so, for example, you can uh, use your mm, first department uh, for internal trainings and uh, another one for, mm, for your customers, for example. Um, so, and can you clarify the, the part of the question like time, time savings? So, what, um, what have you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think, Eva, if you were still with us, it would be lovely to hear another clarification from you. But what I have understood from this wording is that um, it is a bit challenging in terms of time and money. So it feels like um, it is a bit expensive and it takes long time to develop e-learning for the clients. So is there any way how to make it less resource consuming, how to make it faster and how to make it cheaper? Okay, I see. Thank you for that clar clarification. So, um, creating courses, um, you can hire a um, course creator, um, an author who will work with Icepring Suite Max. And um, our tool has a um, content library. So, for example, it has about um, 58,000 of different pictures um, and they are ready to use just right on your computer. So you can just put a, a person, you can, uh, you can use backgrounds and so on. So you don't have to waste time um, on searching some um, content through internet. So it is already right here. So you can create everything from scratch and um, you don't have to be um, a professional designer for that. But of course, and if you hire a professional designer, uh, he or she uh, will be able to create content really fast. So you can save a lot of time. Right. Thank you very much, John. Uh, we have uh, a comment from Australia, Sydney. Uh, John uh, is saying that it's very nice to be with us at 2 a.m., of course. We recognize <laughs> that everybody joins from different wow. time zones within the States and from abroad. Yeah, it is amazing. <laughs> so we look forward to um, we look forward to hearing your questions wherever you are now. So I'm sure we still have some time with John and I'm pretty sure that it is uh, going to be very helpful if you ask questions directly now at the recording you'll be able to review the answers but you will not be able to ask questions so please kindly um, welcome you to ask questions while John is still with us uh, we had a question one more well not a question actually but a comment a plus is the iSpring SCORM is compliant for 1.2 and uh, 2004. Very helpful in tracking progress. You may need to choose additional settings in Blackboard and Canvas for the SCORM to work properly through. So this was just um, a comment. If you wish to, you know, say something about that <laughs> or we're good to go. Right. So, um Actually, as I have a client who worked with Blackboard and some other LMSs, so iSpring Suite Max is compatible with those. And um, yes, it supports Squirm, um, mm, Squirms. Um, can you just uh, read it aloud one more time? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, very helpful in tracking progress. You may need to choose additional settings in Blackboard and Canvas for the SCORM to work properly through. To work right. properly, though, I'm so sorry, to work properly, though, of course. Mm -hmm. And um, that was men mentioned uh, about two formats, like SCORM um, 1.2 and 2000. I just... 2004. Yep. So it's compatible. Ice Prince with Max is compatible. Thank you for right. that note. 
Yeah, and it wasn't our ice spring colleague who wrote that. So <laughs> it was actually a user. That sounds great. Thank you so much, NV, whoever you are. Uh, right, Lauren is asking one more question. I saw that your computer generated voiceover is in beta. Are you planning to roll out additional voice options? Um, we have a lot on our roadmap. Um, and you can track that um, on our website. So uh, please be sure to take a look at um, our website. Um, I hope our tech guys will help um, help you with the link. And so you just can take a look and see what um, we are planning to uh, to have to implement in, with iSprint with Max. Okay, thank you, John. This was a question from Lauren. Lauren, I'm sure you, you will receive many nice surprises from iSpring shortly because of all of these better features. We have one more question from Bavesh. What are the most important features when compared to other tools such as Storyline, Captivate, and Lectora. It feels like we are at a venture <laughs> startup pitch when a jury member is asking, what are your key um, advantages against the competitors? So, John, do you have something to say here? Yes, of course. <laughs> so, first of all, um, I, uh, our product, iSpring Suite and iSpring Learn, they are super easy to use. So, they are really user-friendly. Um, and it works with PowerPoint. PowerPoint. So this is a PowerPoint adding. Um, so if you know how to work with PowerPoint, you already know how to work with iSprint Suite Max. So you don't have to um, just uh, waste time on getting used to it. Um, so yes, I think this is um, really important. Mm, because um, usually, um, not uh, not usually, but not all the time. I mean, um, uh, sometimes um, people uh, without any technical skills um, come to us, and they they just can um, work with iSpring Suite, with iSpring Learn, with any with any um, with any issues. And also, um, we have a technical support team, um, and they are happy to help via online chat 24-7. You also can email us and just mm, give a call. So if you have any questions or just issues, contact us and we will immediately help you. Great. Thank you so much, John. A um, couple of more questions from Chris. Chris is saying, um, building e-learning content using PowerPoint, which you have just mentioned, and MP4 videos edited through Adobe Premiere Pro. What authoring tools do you find easiest to learn and use? Okay, thank you again for the question. And can you just repeat it again, please? Of course, that is my job. Absolutely, I'm here to do that. Um, building e-learning content using PowerPoint and MP4 videos edited through Adobe Premiere Pro. What authoring tools do you find easiest to learn and use? I assume Chris might be interested in some other tools apart from the mentioned ones. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes, um, correct. Um, the, the most like powerful authoring tool I experience with Max, um, mm, but also you can use, for example, iSpring Pre Presenter. Um, and we have lots of minor products mm, to work with. Um, Mm. Talking about some other companies, not iSpring. So um, I don't think that um, um, I, I know more um, a lot about them to talk about so to to share. 
to share with you. So um, I would love to talk uh, <laughs> about iSpring and iSpring Sweet Max and iSpring Learn. Um, so it includes, um, so you can create quizzes, so you can write with PowerPoint, as you asked. Um, so you can create um, screencasts, you can create um, dialogue simulations, just write in your PowerPoint with an iSpring tab right there. So I think that that is the best solution to work with PowerPoint. Great. Thanks a lot. I hope this is satisfactory. <laughs> so let's see so. if, uh, yeah, I hope, uh, Chris, this, this is what you find useful. Um, so I guess you also wanted to clarify that, um, Chris wanted to clarify, I also have a few SCORM courses, but have never mm -hmm. edited them. Can I do that myself and how? I wonder, John, if that's the question that you can answer or that's a question to our technical team. Uh, I'm not sure I'm following. So uh, you have a Squirm um, file. I have two right? Squirm courses, but I have mm -hmm. never edited them. Can I do that myself and how? Actually, you cannot do that with iSpring Suite Max, but you can mm -hmm. create a Squirm format with so you, you are not able to open a SCORM file with iSprints mm -hmm. with Max, but you can create it. Mm -hmm. Okay, I understand very well. Also, um, a question from Andrea. Does iSpring Learn have gamification elements, for example, leaderboards, badges, etc.? <laughs> Thank you a lot for that question. Yes, <laughs> um, it, it uh, truly has. Um, you, for passing um, courses, uh, you, you can award uh, learners with pages, uh, with points, and also you, um, you can see, um, um, you can rank them. So you can see who is on first place, on the second and the third, and, and so on. Mm -hmm. Okay, that sounds good. Um actually very excited also to hear such kind of questions which help um, the colleagues who are attendees to better understand the product and the opportunities in general. Okay, so we still have several more questions and uh, they are popping up now more and more. That's great to hear. So um, does, uh, oh, pardon me, uh, a question from Colleen. Using poor LMS, not ice cream, we use all free systems, so no um, Camtasia, no storyline, etc. How do we work around this? Did you try to present them with other LMS and how we would benefit? Do you have any ideas? Um, <clears throat> thank you for, for your question. Um, I think the best idea um, right here uh, will be to um, to uh, put you in contact with uh, one of my colleagues so you can dive deeply into your project um, find uh, things that you can present mm. so if you if you can share your email address or um, anything else so we, we will be able to reach out to you to get back to you on that and mm -hmm. we will definitely help you with that right i do have to skip several questions unfortunately because there are more and more questions coming and i'm not sure we'll be right. able to cover <laughs> all of them but i do want to ask a question from uh, a recent graduate so um it's david again uh, he says uh, that he's, in, he's new to e-learning development process, a new graduate, and what advice would you give someone like me to best get started? It's a very generic question, I guess, but also at the same time gives you a chance to provide a piece of advice that would be helpful, not just for the newcomers, but for those who are already in the industry. So what would be a best advice that you could give someone like David to best get started. Okay. Mm. <laughs> okay. Thanks for for the question. Uh, so first of all, you can just uh, try to shop around 
to see what um, we can find on the market. And then you can just try to uh, start free trials. So many of our competitors and we do have a trial. So you can just try, um, try the tools out um, to see how it works. Try, you can try to create something, um, then upload to LMS. Mm. So, and also it depends on what you want to achieve. Um, so the, that question you should always ask before launching anything, um, I think in e-learning. So when you have upcoming goals, mm, when they are defined, so you can um, step by step moving forward uh, with that. So uh, to start with, I would say that the best idea will be to uh, shop around and just try test different products out to try mm, a free version of, uh, of right. the tools. Okay. Yes. Thank you so much, John. I hope David finds that useful. Uh, apart from that, uh, there is a question about motion animation in iSpring storyboarding. I assume it might be best answered by the technical team, and I've already seen them sharing some information with our mm -hmm. attendees, but I still wonder if maybe you want to take this one as well. Uh, is it possible to include motion animation in iSpring storyboarding? Also, do you have a function that allows you to use various transition effects from the latest PowerPoint features? So everything um, that work with, work, works with PowerPoint um, um, will work with Icepring with Max, so you can use it. But um, um, it depends on what kind of animations you want to create and uh, what is um, created. Um, so, uh, yes, as you mentioned, um, our technical support guys <laughs> will be happy to help with that, um, about what kind of animations can be like transferred to Icepring Suite. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much, John. I think this was helpful and we're already getting some comments from the technical support i'm sure they are answering a lot uh to um uh to the question to the answer that you've already provided so um there is one more yeah there is one more question from lena uh and the question is also can be that can be the essay question be manually checked can it be fixed or the editing options can be added to learn while doing assignment. So I want such questions to look user friendly. Is it understandable for you, John? Yes, thank you mm -hmm. for, for the question. Um, yes, of course, you can create an assignment and um, with, with iSprint Learn. And I, for example, you can ask um, the learner to share a document with you so you can take a look. Um, make some notes and um, upload it back to the viewer. So they will be able to make some um, some comments or just can do something with with um, this as, um, assignment with this task or what do you have? Great. Thank you so much. I uh, hope, Lina, this answers your questions. Again, if you have any other specific technical questions, feel free to shoot them in the chat and the technical support will take over from there. Uh, John, do you know how many uh, attendees do we have watching the live streaming right now? Do you have any guesses? Uh, no, maybe. OK, let me just let, let me just try. So um, uh -huh. let's say about um, a, a thousand and a half. Oh, I wish. I'm sure it's going to be that many in the recording. But so far, okay. um, <laughs> about 100, 170 people are watching us right now online. Wow. But the good <laughs> okay, news is great. that 
Yeah, that still sounds great. And the good news is that this number is not dropping. So people are consistently with us. <laughs> this is the most important thing, I believe. The sustainable. Yeah, thank you for sharing. I'm so happy um, people are joining, um, talking with us and <laughs> finding. Right. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for joining this meeting. Right. Um, John, are you able to entertain a couple of more questions or are you very tired from the very, very attentive and detailed questions of our <laughs> audience? So, yes, I'm ready to answer a couple of um, more questions. So, yes, feel free to <laughs> read aloud. Sure. Uh, I do uh, welcome everybody who hasn't asked questions yet please join our wonderful dialogue, a very authentic conversation, just as uh, Sarah has mentioned, Sarah Joe has mentioned, I appreciate your authenticity and thank you, John, she says. Uh, people really appreciate your answers, John. Thank you so much. Let's uh, know that. And, oh, yeah, know. absolutely, absolutely. Uh, we'd like to just make a couple of comments about the technical issues while maybe you are bringing on board the very last questions for John. I'd like to say that, um, first of all, uh, you might request assistance uh, about Telegram uh, from our colleagues uh, in technical support. So uh, I do hope that they will provide the link about downloading Telegram to your computer, to your desktop. It is available by a desktop version as well. So it's not gonna be difficult for you guys. Um, the other comments are all related to thanks, and we also have a couple of people engaging in a conversation about some personal issues, so it's nice to see that the community is growing and you guys are exchanging some personal bits and pieces of information. Great to see that, really great. So, um, let's see, a couple of last questions we have are about the support team. Again, from Lena. I have already written to support team and also some other suggestions. So hope they will be considered. Um, sorry, this is not a question. This is just um, a comment. Right. And I would like to probably ask you uh, a couple of um, questions on my side and we'll probably call it um, the end of the session with John. So uh, I will ask one question that was always very intriguing to me. Uh, when it comes to the features um, that the clients appreciate about e-learning, you've already mentioned some advantages that you feel were helpful for the clients who don't need to spend money on airplane tickets, you know, accommodation, many hours of training, et cetera, et cetera. Um, what are the most important things that your clients are telling you when it comes to um, appreciating e-learning? So once clients start e-learning instead of traditional learning, what do they appreciate most? Time savings, of course. Um, as you mentioned, um, um, when people travel a lot to um, to do face-to-face -face trainings, they they spend maybe sometimes they waste time um, just to get somewhere. Um, so yes, first of all, when they start e-learning, they are so happy that they have um, time for um, something else, and they can um, develop more products, um, uh, more courses. So they have more time for more important things. And um, what also they uh, really like, um, we have lots of automated features like notifications. So once you, um, for example, when you have um, a group of new hires, you can create a special group, uh, let's say, um, let's call it, um, onboarding. And you can set up a rule right in your iSpring Learn LMS when, when the user is um, added to that group, he or she will be enrolled automatically to a course onboarding. So you don't have to 
do so many um, uh, like manual tasks. Right. It will be done manual at the operations. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead, John. I'm sorry <laughs> I interrupted you. No, no, no. Actually, that's um, uh, I, that's all I wanted to tell you about it. But if you have any other questions, I will be happy to discuss. Great. Great. I think we have two more, and that would be it, I promise. Um, <laughs> one okay. would be about iSpring and MacBook, um, about the compatibility, like why iSpring does not work on Mac. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes, thank you for that question. You know, I <laughs> sometimes I ask um, myself, <laughs> but uh, actually, uh, it doesn't depend on us. We would like to work with Macs, but um, Mac OS, um, they, it doesn't allow any um, extensions. So uh, you cannot just, so you have PowerPoint, but you, you cannot have an extension. So you can, uh, you cannot um, implement um, PowerPoint tab right there. It depends on, um, on the system, I mean Mac OS system. With mm -hmm. Windows, um, it, Windows allows that, but uh, Mac OS doesn't. Unfortunately, right. But, but you can use your Mac uh, with um, iSpring Space and iSpring Learn because they are cloud-based tools and yep. um, so I'm talking about right now only about iSpring Suite. So actually mm -hmm. iSpring Suite um, has two parts, uh, a desktop one and a cloud one. So mm -hmm. with Mac, you cannot work with only a desktop part, but you can work with mm, a cloud one. Right. Okay. Thank you so much. And as promised, as promised, the very last question about okay. the compatibility. Can okay. you tell me if there is any completion status if I use a different LMS, Squirm from iSpring, or do I have to use iSpring LMS? Is there any compatibility issue? Um, compatibility issues with uh, with what? Can you just again clarify that? Sure. So you, sure. So you want to um, to use Quorum from iSpring, but use a different LMS. Okay. Okay. Is so that good? yes, um, of course. When you have um, a whole set of tools, iSpring with Max and iSpring Learn, you can have um, as <laughs> as many detailed reports as you want to. Um, and uh, it depends on the third party LMS system that you use with iSpring Suite. Um, and uh, it can be limited, yes. So some kind of reports can be limited. But uh, as I mentioned, uh, that depends on the LMS that you are using. And um, I think our tech guys usually find um, a way around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's hope that they'll be able to help us with that as well. Thank you very much for asking, uh, Juventus. I also see that uh, we also have several comments about how excited people are to learn about ice spraying throughout this conference. I'm very happy too that we have kickstarted the conversation with you, John. This has been super, super helpful. Juventus and many others, um, uh, Khadija, for example, they thank you for your comments and valuable input. And um, I apologize for those people who are experiencing difficulties with Telegram. Christina, I'm totally with you. I understand that sometimes it might be tricky to set up, uh, unfortunately, to set up such messengers on the uh, desktop, but I'm sure our technical support will provide uh, some article or advice on that to be sure that you're able to join our community. Wow, we have a lot of thank you messages in the chat. Unfortunately, wow. 
Yeah, uh, John, I'm not sure you're able to see them because you're limited to um, the screen of your computer and you're not able to see the YouTube streaming at the same time. But believe me, uh, there are many, many people, actually a dozen of people at least, who are very thankful. And yes, absolutely. They are very happy to receive, to have received your your answers. Uh, well, John, am I correct that we are having some other guests from iSpring throughout the conference to also provide some more information about iSpring tools and services? Correct. So yes, um, you will have a lot of interesting things today and tomorrow. So, uh, so yeah. thank you again for joining this uh, conference. I'm happy to be here and ha I'm happy to share with you and thank you for sharing your thoughts, um, for your comments. Um, I really appreciate that. Thank you, Chris, <laughs> for your pleasure. Uh, support. My pleasure. Of course, of course. I uh, thanks again, John. Now I'm sure we will all be able to share our uh, supportive messages to John. He will be able to read all of them right after the streaming is over. So just as you will be able to see both the video, the presentation, meaning the slides, and the chat. Uh, after the uh, event is over, uh, my colleagues promised they would share all of these materials with all of you so that you will be able to get back to them later on. And I'd like to once again say many thanks for the session. If you wish to um, disconnect now, it's perfectly okay. I'll just inform our guests and attendees about the next steps, right? Sure, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, thank you again. If you're interested in testing and launching your e-learning, don't hesitate to get the free trial of iSpring Learn LMS, of which John has just talked. I think it's a great way to test everything out. You're on your own way, so your own experience will be the best judgment for you. And um, it's free for use for 30 days, and we will share the link in the chat. Now, uh, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, I really appreciate your kind comments. It actually makes me feel very energized. Uh, and I'd like to say that for, re for keeping this level of energy, for sustaining this level of energy, I believe we need a little break. About 24 minutes, actually. We will meet at 12.40 EDT or 8.40 PST on the Kevin Siegel session about course design how to develop easy to learn content in PowerPoint. We've talked about PowerPoint a lot today. So he will talk about basic rule of designing a course, how to use visuals to enhance the learner experience, PowerPoint tips and tricks that will make the slides look better and easy to manage visuals as the key to e-learning success. I hope you will be able to have your a cup of tea or coffee to rehydrate yourself, maybe exercise a little bit to be sure that you are absolutely attentive and focused for uh, Kevin's session. At this time, at this point, I would welcome you to recharge and see you exactly in 23 minutes. See you guys.